Interface Video, in cooperation with Fairfield Federal, presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield County Adam H., Dagger Law, and the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities. Hello friends and welcome to Fairfield Today. Paul Jasson with you as we broadcast and telecast from the lobby downtown of Fairfield Federal. And, and uh, one of the more interesting things in, in parts of the show of Fairfield Today, uh, as we do it for many years now, is, is when we have the opportunity to talk to either a local business or local people. It's always entertaining to do that, just to see the people and the businesses that make up uh, Lancaster and Fairfield County. And that's the, the case today. We have a local girl on with us. Doesn't live here, but she is a local girl. Bree Burgett, Brianna, but we'll call her Bree. Welcome. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. Well, we're excited to have you. And uh, the reason Bree is with us, she's not a local business person, but she is a local girl from here. And we'll go into her background. But Bree is a Marine. Yes, I have a Marine on. That's rare for me. I know that, but I have a Marine on. And she is now a captain in the United States Marines, soon to be a major, maybe this year yet. Is hopefully. that possible? Waiting for the number to come up for promotion. That but yes, is hopefully this year. remarkable. Congratulations on Thank that. You. When you make major, that is in any branch of the service, that is big time. So you're a local girl born here in Fairfield County. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, homeschooled, mm -hmm. but with a diploma from the Lancaster High School. That's right. That's Good excellent. Them. How many years ago was that? Ten? Uh, a little bit longer because I graduated from a high university oh. ten years ago. Oh, so maybe 15. <laughs> about around, yeah, around. 14, 15 years ago. So a Gale and a Bobcat, mm -hmm. but now she's pursuing another degree at the University of North Carolina. I guess that's online for the most part for you. So I finished the UNC degree okay. and I'll be heading off and doing another master's program with uh, the Marine Corps, through the Marine Corps. And isn't do. this nice that the Marines are paying for this? It is, is and it's, it's going to be, that's absolutely. one of the great benefits of being in the military and keep mm -hmm. your education going and, and just be so good for you. So, so as a young person, uh, was this something, it's hard to imagine you didn't want to be a fireman or a cop or something as a kid. You didn't always want to be a Marine, I'm guessing. Not really. So I'd always go to the Marine tent when they would have it at really? the, the Fairfield County Fair. I'd go yeah. to all the tents, but they had the pull-up bar there. Yep, I and remember So I'd jump that. up on the pull-up bar and see how long I was could Was that hang. the one by the track right there? It is, yep, yep exactly, on the edge that. of the track. So yes. I'd go up and I'd always go to the right? Marine tent. You I bust all really the guys? Could you outdo them? I, I think I set the record a few <laughs> years for holding on the bar. I never really thought I would go and join the Marine Corps, but I graduated when I was 19 from Ohio University. And I was a little young to do a couple of the things I was interested in, and I thought military would be a really good experience and, and an opportunity to, to serve and do something valuable at the beginning of a career. So I plan on doing maybe four years, and, and then I've just continued to stay in. Well, let's go back to that 19. It's like young Sheldon. So you graduated from Ohio University in 19, I assume, mm -hmm. at Lancaster somehow you're involved in all that post-secondary thing that goes on there and you had a lot done by the time you actually graduated high school that's right yeah so yeah. i did the post-secondary and then was able to start and have a kickstart on finishing a little bit early from from a high university which and was as, as a quick aside i don't i don't know if you've seen the pictures of the new lancaster high school that's going to be here in two or three years it's going to be amazing they're going to tear oh, down wow. the old high school you know we have all new schools now in lancaster mm -hmm. except the high school that'll be new two or three years we'll have a new high school so when you come back you'll have to look at that yeah, uh so now good. you're uh you will be stationed down at quantico is that's that right. it mm -hmm. is that a marine or is that a civilian base so it's mostly a marine base that's down okay. there. They have FBI in the yes. same area, yes. which is the show everyone, sure. every time yeah, I mention I'm knows going to Quantico, Quantico that's it. they're that's like, oh, it. we're like the FBI. <laughs> um, but the Marines also have a base there. And so that's where you do all of your initial training as an officer. And so it'll be the first time that I've gone back there in many years. So you've been there before. I did. Where did so you take basic training? Paris in Island? Quantico. In Quantico. So that's where they send all the officer candidates through okay. to, to commission. And then I did six more months there at basic school where you learn to be an infantry platoon commander and then now I'll be going back and doing the masters in military studies from so when I was in what we were in whatever uh, uh, not army but whatever you were doing in the army you had an MOS I don't know if they still mm -hmm. have that but what what do you do what's your MOS what is that about 
So my MOS, you get those at the end of the basic school for, okay. for our programming. And you ask for your list of everything that you're interested in. And then they go in and they deliberate and they say, all right, this is what you're going to get. Uh, and so I asked for, and I got very lucky that I got it for combat engineer. So you get to nice. build things and you blow things up. So Th that's really the job of the military. I think it that is. is the job of the military. And they may train <laughs> other people in other things, but it's to keep us safe and blow things up. I mean, mm -hmm. that's really what the military is all about. Have you been involved in any blowing things up? A little bit. So I had um, I had an engineer platoon, and then had the aviation XO for company in Okinawa, and we got to travel mm. around. So we got to do some really cool projects from Okinawa, of going and building schools and doing humanitarian civic assistance nice. projects, which was very cool. And then you got to do a lot of training. Pretty for rewarding, I suspect. Absolutely, and it was things I had no idea I'd even have the chance to do while yeah. being in the military. Yeah. So. So it's I've heard you good. talk, uh, we talked a little bit before you went on, uh, you've been stationed in Germany, mm -hmm. so now we learn you've been in Okinawa, mm -hmm. uh, where else has uh, this worldwide tour taken you? Um, I was in Fort Story in Virginia Beach as well, so I did Okinawa was my first for about three years and then back in Virginia Beach. And there I started working for Africa, so I got a second MOS nice. as a Sub-Saharan Africa Foreign Affairs Officer and started learning a lot more about Africa and the problem sets there. And then when I went to Germany, I was focused on Africa the entire time I was there as well. My guest is Bree Burjad. Bree is a captain in the United States Marine Corps, possibly this year being promoted to major. Um, do you have to go before a board and take, I don't know, either written and or a verbal test to get to go from captain to major? How does that work? So they look at your entire professional career okay. and they look at you have the fitness reports that your senior officers write on you and then they evaluate you based on those and your fitness tests. So running the, the physical fitness test for um, three mile run, pull ups, crunches, all those things. Um, you're shooting your marksmanship for pistol, rifle, where you're at. We do martial arts, and so where you are in your belt levels of how far you've advanced, they consider all those things and then determine who's going to get promoted. Yeah, how many people are up at the same time? Do you have any idea about that, or is that just a I'm big picture sure. thing? Yeah. Yeah. So. And it depends on per year of how many people have stayed in and, and what they're looking at. So how many years have you been in the Marines now? Just over 10. 10 years. I signed up, yeah. Okay. And so at 10, that's probably about half of what we would think of as a uh, as a career in the military. It used to be 20. Mm -hmm. Is that still pretty close? It is. 20 yeah. years. So 10 years to go. Uh, thoughts about being in longer or is that anything you can commit to or talk about? So I, I switched to the reserves and I'm planning on continuing with the reserves okay. for um, the foreseeable future. Yeah. I want to continue doing it as long as the Marine Corps still wants me and I still enjoy and love what I get to do. So we'll see where it continues to take me. Uh, our congressman around here is a fellow named Steve Stivers and okay. he was in the military and he was like mm -hmm. that. He got out, he's always been in the reserves. He's now a congressman, but he's been in the reserves. So he has sort of that dual career, which I guess that would be, if, if that's the track you take, that would be probably something you'd be interested in. Potentially, yeah, yeah something yeah. like that. Any part of the world you haven't been to, you'd like to go to yet? Antarctica is still on my list, so I've done the other six continents. I've seen penguins. I mean, I've said they're little black and white things. Mm -hmm. it's, that's all there is down there. Come it's on. It's very cold. They had the mountains, so I started. I did Kilimanjaro and I climbed Mount Elbrus in Russia. So I've what done is two. Wrong with you? What is I wrong don't know. With that's you? a good question. I've done two of the seven, so I'd like to go to Antarctica that's and climb remarkable. one of the other ones. Well, it's massive. So I guess is there a place down there, a marine? occupancy down there that that you could go so. no you'd no. go there on your I'd own go there on my own save nice. up leave days and go down there wow so uh kind It'd of a good cool. plan there so so is this engineer is this always what you've been involved in for the 10 years some sort of combat engineering it has been so going between yes. combat engineer and then focusing on the africa okay. so now that i have two of the mos's my focus shifts back and forth between the two so, so assuming you get this uh, yet this year, you become promoted to major, which is mm -hmm. a tremendous accomplishment. Congratulations! Thank you. I mean, captain is great, but major is just, <laughs> I'm sure, over the top. I is is next in the Marines, lieutenant colonel. Would that be it next? Is. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so if you become this this uh, uh, Marine major. Mm -hmm. uh, would that mean any difference in what you and as you continue your schooling? Do you know where that would lead you, or what your next step would be? So the, the schooling program that I'm already planning on going to starting this summer 
is is for the major level so then I'll already be ready and started trending towards for for the next rank of lieutenant colonel um, but it will open up new job billets and opportunities that I could go to a handful of different places so once I'm there and I'm finishing up the school then they'll mm. come in with the different opportunities and see where there's openings and where it would be a good fit to potentially go afterwards so so when the time comes for you to rotate to your next duty station is that how it works they give you some possibilities mm -hmm. and then you make a choice but then ultimately the Marine Corps the big Marine Corps decides Yes, and it's a little bit different between the active and reserves. As a reservist, you get a little bit more choice in mm -hmm. where you go, which mm -hmm. is nice because active, you can give your wish list and they'll sure. still pick something else. No. Um, they try and fit good balance between needs of the Marine Corps and the individual good. requests. So we'll see. That, I'm, that, that's amazing. Um, a, as you think now, your 10 years, are you still kind of have to pinch yourself sometimes and say, I've been, I've been in this only 10 years and look at the things I've done and accomplished, that still has to be pretty awing. And it's been, I've been extremely um, blessed and fortunate with a lot of the opportunities and I've, again I've gotten the chance to lead some phenomenal Marines and it's mm. a very unique responsibility but an amazing opportunity and I've been incredibly fortunate and I've had some fantastic leaders in the Marines and it's definitely gone by a lot faster. It's crazy to look back now and think it's been a decade. Um, but is, it goes quickly. Yes, it does. And, and just any real high points that really stick out to you in 10 years, is there any one or two things that you think, wow, that was, that was the best? I, I really enjoyed so that they stood up the Marine Rotational Force to Darwin. So in, in Australia, and I got to be a part of the first debt that took a team down there. And we did the first six months down, um, standing that whole program up. So that was definitely a personal high point. And getting to work in Africa, there's it's always unique and it's different every time you're going um, to a lot of different countries. And it's very, again, challenging, but it's different all of the time. And I've really enjoyed that change constantly. And, and now you're going down to Quantico, and again, this is more schooling and more mm -hmm. in this uh, combat engineering role? This is just for all the, the majors that at this oh, point in their okay. career that they'll take them and, and you're learning. So you'll be in class studies. with other people that are up for this, either up for or are majors? They'll all pretty much all be majors. Okay. So, so they'll the all rank you. In, they'll they're, all be the junior one in the class for a little bit. You'll have to everybody in class. Yeah, you know just yeah. inside, but hopefully my, my performance will do well there. So, so you're a Lancaster girl. Your mom and dad are uh, still in Lancaster. They still live here. They uh, are, and I'm, yeah, I get to come home and visit for the first time in a few years. Is that has it been a while since you've been home? Three and a half years oh since my. I've been back here. So it has been too long, and it's yeah. really good. I was planning on coming back last year, and COVID threw a wrench in those plans. But yeah. it's very nice to be back here now. Uh, and and one thing we do want to mention: yesterday was your birthday. Congratulations yes. on that! You get Thank to spend you. your birthday at home. Did, was that part of the plan, or is it just that's the way it worked out? It's the way it worked out, wow. timing wise. How yeah. great was that? I, Very it, good. I see all your friends again. Has the town changed much as you look back now? Do you, is it still the same Lancaster you remember? I, just a lot of it seems the the same of some of the good things I remember. But I think the downtown area has certainly been improving, and oh, you my. see changes across oh, the the area. So it's seems like it's going in a very good direction. Used to be nothing but storefronts down here and now you can't get a parking spot. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very a, busy. It's amazing. <laughs> so, well, congratulations, Bree, on uh, just a, a fabulous decade in the Marines and uh, it'll be fun to watch as this uh, continues for you and uh, best of luck as you move on. You're, you're a your real asset, Lancaster, is, is proud to have you as their, one of their daughters. We're proud that you're part of Lancaster and uh, good luck in the future and uh, as the Marine Corps Hoorah to you and, and all your Marine buds. And remember, November 11th is the Marine Corps anniversary, so you remember that. 10 November, 1775. You, and you never <laughs> we, forget we it. Exactly. Very good. Uh, Bree Burgett has been our guest, uh, a local girl who's a captain and soon to be a major in the Marine Corps again. Congratulations. It's been Thank great you so having much. you on. Thanks for stopping by and happy birthday. Thank you very much. <laughs> we'll be back on Fairfield today in just a moment. Fairfield Federal. When it comes to our customers and our community, we go above and beyond to help. Our people make the difference. We were uh, retiring from Tucson, Arizona, and we made a retirement trip out around Ohio, having decided where we wanted to be. And we came across this town called Lancaster, and we fell in love with the downtown area, where the fountain is, and the memorials, and the flags, and 
and all this stuff. And I looked around and I said, there's our bank right there. There's something to be said about a, a community bank in your hometown. Right. If you live in the community, you should do business in the community as much as possible. So it makes sense to bank with the community bank that you where you live. Fairfield Federal is the bank to be at. If, you're bit, if you live in this town, or any town actually, you want to bank at a local home bank. And the employees are happy here, they're conversant, customer service is through the roof. There's nothing more you could ask for. Personal or business banking, whatever you need, we take it seriously because we know you do. Stop by today at any of our three locations and see why the difference is clear. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan specializes in banking that revolves around you. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Welcome back to Fairfield Today. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate uh, Bree Bridget being with us. Uh, great to talk to a local girl who uh, has done so many great things. And speaking of local girls who have done great things, <laughs> it's a pleasure to have on Temple Custer Montanez. Oh, thank Welcome, you. Welcome, Temple thank Ann. Thank you very much. Temple Ann. Temple Custer. Ann, you're right. Yes, you're right. Uh, Director of Community, uh, Community Relations at Fairfield County DD. Um, we've talked before a while ago. Uh, probably coming now out of the pandemic yes. as you think back uh, a challenging 18 months very much so sure very much so I think I mean obviously for everybody I mean I, I don't want to say that we you know we were unsung heroes but certainly we've you know we have a staff of 150 people that are supporting 1,350 people and their families in Fairfield County and um, we hadn't done that remotely before sure. so that was a, a quick clamoring to uh, you know, even the logistics of it, the operations of it. How do you get people from an office setting to a home setting without missing a beat and dropping any balls? And so, um, you know, hats off to our IT department, both yeah. county and Fairfield DD, for yeah. making that happen. And and again, you've got no <clears throat> roadmap on how to do this. No, we're no. all in, no, but nobody especially did. uncharted territory yeah. for almost everybody. Uh, have you, and I've asked this question of, of a lot of people who have had on coming out of the pandemic. Now, mm -hmm. as you look back and how you did things, will there be things you've learned? Will there be things that you'll carry forth? If, if the pandemic was 100% over today, would you still do some things you learned? Oh yeah, yeah. we already are. You know, yeah. we are a little less stringent about um, you know, that work work model of, you know, get in five minutes early and leave five minutes late and sure. stay in your cube. Sure. And, um, so we're doing a lot more with, um, with hybrid work model um, and the technology part, you know, before, I mean, before the pandemic, I thought Zoom was a sports drink, you know, and then it became uh, a platform and then it became a verb, you know, let's Zoom, I'll Zoom you. Um, and, and now so, everybody wants out. Yeah, everyone is Zoomed out. But, um, <laughs> you know, I think all of that, you know, really embracing that technology and learning how to uh, to not be afraid of it and, and yeah. to make it work for sure. you sure. Um, is definitely something that um, not only Fairfield DD, but I've seen the county capitalize on. And I'm sure there's been people in your in your area over there that uh, embraced this and others uh, fought it tooth and nail, but, but everybody gets on board sooner or later because right. that's all the only way you could do it. Well, and I'll tell you, Paul, um, the people that we support, people with developmental disabilities, um, were right along with us. We How were Zooming with them. How great. Right? And, and they have phones and home computers and whatnot and so we maybe would, they wouldn't even have that chance well and what a great way to connect to your community sure virtually yeah and think about not just people with developmental disabilities but people that are shut-ins or people yeah. that for whatever reason have difficulty getting out into the community now they know how or at least know that there's a possibility sure. to be able to engage with the community without leaving their home, so without leaving the safety. they learned a lot safety. about themselves. Yeah, And their absolutely. families learned a lot about yeah. them, like we didn't know we could do this. Right, and I mean, for better it. or worse, we're sure. all reachable in our own sure. homes. Sure, sure. Um, <laughs> Whether we want to be or not. And, and now as we uh, kind of wind down, uh, we don't know what the future is, but as we wind down in this pandemic, uh, big big talk now is uh, who's gotten vaccinated. 42% of Ohio and is, they're trying to, I didn't win the million bucks. Like apparently you did you not didn't. either. Well, I recognized your tie, so I, I, I that was a repeat performance on the local tie. Girl, so local figure, girl. I figure, figure you didn't, you didn't get the big win. But how did vaccinations get handled out there? Uh, I assume everyone in, as an employee or maybe a volunteer, maybe like at Fairfield Medical, everybody probably had to have that. Was that the case? Um, our employees were not required okay. to do that, um, and still are not required. Um, however. What we did do is we worked very closely with our friends at the Fairfield County Health Department yep. and um, established a vaccination clinic, a series of them actually, um, out of Forest Rose okay. School. 
Um, primary reason we did that was not to, to do anything that wasn't inclusive, but as you know, a lot of times people with developmental disabilities have transportation issues. So they may not drive, or they may not live on an LPT route. Um, so we were able to coordinate with families and providers, and caregivers, um, to get individuals into uh, Forrester School for vaccination. We also okay. were able to have all of our, uh, we call them individual support coordinators, but they're caseworkers to have the caseworkers call people supported by Fairfield DD and their families and um, and make the offer to them that this was this time and place were going to be available. Um, what I think is really important for people to know is that in no way is this required of people because they have a, a health condition or a developmental disability. Were they considered a more high risk or vulnerable population? Yeah, by the state they were, by the governor's office sure. they were. However, sure. um, many of the people that we support are their own guardians, meaning they are capable of making their own decisions in their own best interest. And you live with that. Absolutely, and so we wanted individuals to be able to know everything there was to know about the vaccine, the pros, the cons, the reasoning behind it, how it worked, what is a vaccine. Uh, we worked very closely with the Ohio Association of County Boards um, to make sure that that language that was being put out for everyone was what we call plain language, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that um, you know it was it was understandable. It was in layman's terms. A lot of high tech stuff going right, on. Right, right. I mean, there were things I didn't understand. Sure. So, um, you know, we wanted to make sure that um, that we had a lot of what we call social stories, which are um, being able to to communicate that information with visual cues and visual pictures. So we made every effort possible to educate people and their families about the vaccine um, prior to working with the health department to establish those, um, those clinics. Also with those clinics, we did have um, some of our caseworkers were there, some of our behavior support specialists were there. These were volunteers? Uh, yeah, or, or people that work for Fearful DD. Okay. Yeah, but also okay. volunteers from the health department. Dr. Yeah. Snyder was down there with sure. us. Sure. So, He's everywhere. Uh, yes, he is. And, um, you know, so we were really able to make it accessible, informative, educational. Um, and again, we couldn't have done it without the, the, the health department. They were just such a great crew of people and you you look back at your clients now in ohio i think i saw last night uh the number is about 42 a little over 42 percent of ohioans have had both shots if you got the two shot mm -hmm. thing uh you know what your ratio is there do you have any idea of how many got the second shot well how many have completed vaccinations in, in your world um i don't know because that would be a hipaa oh a HIPAA. you think a lot of people but i know that. that we contacted um everybody that was eligible was contacted okay um, by our agency we support i said i think i said 1350 people relatively half of those are individuals that are considered adults um so you know 600 and some wow were contacted nice um you know and it was a fairly high percentage Good. of people that that uh, took us up on the offer um but as far as the actual number i don't know just because i'm not privy sure. to that let's that information uh, let's move on from pandemic talk it's yes. nice to move what? on to pandemic? talk something else what? uh what's new at art and clay oh my gosh art and clay i'm I gonna mean, say that means a lot there's such a gem they're such a gem in downtown, and this time of year, right before festival, they're busy, as you can imagine, school's out. They're still operating at half capacity as far as their tables, oh. but they're doing the same amount of business that they did in 2019. Really? I've got a lot of it's carry out. They, they did a lot. This is ingenious. Their, um, their manager, Mitzi Neiswanger, came up with this idea of pogo kits, which was pottery painting to go. And it was so popular that it's, that's something that stayed with us post-pandemic. Um, you can call down and you can order a little kit. You can say, hey, I'm going to have my grandkids this week and I'm looking for something to do. Can you put together a kit of pottery and paints and I'll come down and pick it up and we'll do it. We'll take it out to the park and have a picnic and we'll do it outside. And that has taken off those public really? tits. They're very, yeah, oh yeah. Again, part of this creative thing that yeah, you learn to do Yeah, think outside of the box. Out, yeah, that's and exactly it sticks. Right. So, yeah, and the, it's worked out well. Very well, very well. It's become a huge um, percentage of their business. Of course, they are always great about keeping kids entertained and educated in the summertime. So they have some great classes that are happening down there for um, kids relatively in the ages between 10 and 14, thereabouts. Um, they've got a calligraphy class. They've got uh, wheel throwing, wet clay classes. They've got uh, just all sorts of stuff. You have to get on their website at artandclayonmain.com um, and you can see the list of classes. You can pay for them online. You can register, you can do all of those things. Uh, that way and then of course at any time you can just go in and paint the coffee st shop square seven is open for business I've got my um, a big <laughs> I Notice can't even that. call it a cup of coffee no. it's really more of a 
I don't know yeah. what you would call that. 55 gallon drum. Something like that. Yes, yeah, it's like a, I mean, yeah. Uh, a growler of coffee a growler. as well. <laughs> that's, that's really, yeah, that's an excellent Hey, they've call. got the best cold brew in town, Square right? Absolutely. Now, you may have to peel me off the ceiling at the end of the day after I've had a little I'd bit of it. I'd have to do that almost any day. Right, anyway. exactly. That's, that's You're your right. nature. You're right. Uh, so, so really, uh, what, was that your first contact with D.D. Was, was when you were with the coffee Art shop? Clay? That, Art no, Clay? I started at Fairfield D.D. as a substitute teacher at Forest Rose. Oh, okay. And it was such a cool experience, and I had heard about it for many, many years, and uh, knew a couple people that had done that. And we're yeah. always looking also for substitute teachers at Forest Rose as well as sure. one-on-one aides. So, if anyone's ever interested in that, give us a call or check out our website. Um, but that's how I started, and I wasn't there very long before I found mm. myself at Art and Clay on Main. And then a year later, we put in the coffee shop. Yes, I remember that. Um, so I was there three or four years, I believe. And the then, rest is uh, history. Yeah, the rest is history. I've been. Running my mouth. Never ever look since. back. <laughs> yeah. uh, we've got a couple of minutes. Yet. Let's wrap it up by talking about. I, I know a big part of your job and your team's job out there. Keep kids, or not kids, keep people involved in the community. Yes. That's that's what you work hard at. Yes, we do. We do. We want to make sure that people with developmental disabilities are of the community, not just living in the community. Sure. As I said, one new way that we discovered to do that during the pandemic was virtually. And um, our provider and community relations department, um, Rachel McCoy, who I believe you know is a fellow Kiwanian, um, had a brilliant Lovely idea girl. to start hosting um, virtual community which is a show, and I know, I know uh, Interface Video helped with that quite a bit in the beginning, too, as, as a launch, But um, and I think we even run some of those episodes now uh, right. on this channel right. as well. Right. Um, but every Thursday, they host a different either business or community organization or entity online on a Zoom platform where people um, can present and interact with one another and learn a little bit more about their community without ever leaving their home. So that's something that, that took off that's still going. Um, we're very proud of that. and. Uh, yeah, and it's nice to see our providers are open and and, uh, and providing those activities for people as well. People are employed. We had a lot of people secure jobs during sure, the, the pandemic. Sure. So things getting back to normal out there well, as normal. they are in the community. Yeah, what, right? what, whatever we do is normal. I, I will guess. tell you, people are back in the office, yeah. and that is refreshing to see. Again, to it is see a hybrid again, model, but you know? yeah, it's really yeah. nice to see people again and, yeah. and walk by someone's office door, and there's someone actually in there. Um, we did a cute little video on our website to the theme of Welcome Back, Cotter, um, you know, with people waving, because it, it really was like reconnecting with, it was like a family reunion that first week we, that everybody was I was, was going to say, was, did it, was it a little weird, mm -hmm. everybody coming back? Everybody was gone at some point, yes, right? Everybody yes. was gone everybody was for gone. months, mm -hmm. for months. Zoom, Zoom, that's yep. how we met. Yep. Looked like the Brady Bunch Absolutely. on your computer. Yep. So now everybody comes back, and I suppose there was a, a learning curve there on how to Everybody was a little, was well, everybody a little different? How yes, and I have to say, I know we're running out of time, but real quickly, we moved into a new space attached to Forest Rose School. Mm -hmm. We sort of have a whole campus out there now. So in the middle of the pandemic, we moved everybody's offices. <laughs> so not only was it confusing to come back after cruel. 16 months out, but all of a sudden nobody was sitting where they had been sitting before. So we're still figuring that out. I'm hiding. I'm not letting anybody know where my new office is. Your little cubicle took, is somebody yeah, else? Uh, yeah, I've taken the, the, the badge off the outside of the door. Nobody knows who's I, I would say just listen for the chatter. <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, we might be able to run you down I based know, on that. I know. I'm not real good at being covert. Well, so. that's that's not your job. You're, no. you're in the perfect job for you, community uh, relations the out there, again. PR, get to talk to <laughs> folks and stuff. A lot of fun every day. Every and day. We work with an incredible, incredible team. And what did you say, 150 people? Yeah, roughly about, about 150 wow. employees. That includes wow. our teachers at the school and, and aides and one-on-one -on -one aides and substitutes and everybody. But, yeah. There's doing? only one or two of us that, you know, are, are getting a little long in the tooth. Well, you're doing so. a great job out there. You <laughs> folks have always done a, a wonderful job out there in the community. Yeah, just we're blessed, blessed to be able to do what well, we do. The community really is glad to have it. And, yeah. and it's, it's been a great opportunity for me today to have two local girls on that grew up in this community. The first segment, if you saw that, was Brianna. Jet. A, she's a hard act to follow. Paul. Well, she, she's a good lo, little local girl. Yeah. Uh, graduated, uh, homeschooled, but graduated yeah. from Lancaster and Ohio University. Mm -hmm. It's the same kind of train that everybody else does, but it's it's far reaching for her and you, a local girl that uh, went away and has come back now yeah. and gotten involved again. Absolutely. So yeah. it's fun to talk to local people who've it done is. well, it especially is. you. You, you know, we're Love blessed having in you this on community. the show. I understand. Let's have uh, lunch. <laughs> in 45 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll buy. Okay. Thank you. Temple Custer Montanez with us on uh, 
Fairfield today and uh, a great job down there by the Fairfield County DD folks. Thank uh, you. Great job. Great Thank job. you. Thank you for joining us on Fairfield today. Interface Video, in cooperation with Fairfield Federal, presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield County Adam H., Dagger Law, and the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities.